Visa, OpenSea, Logan Paul, Dead Mouse, Bacon. These are all words, words that mean things, words Bacon? that I've just spoken. Four of them are connected to today's show. How? You'll find out. Don't be impatient. Also, one of the most popular marketplaces in the WAX ecosystem is doing a token offering for creators and community. You'll find out more about what's shaking at Nifty Blocks on our Nifty News episode number 86 of The Nifty Show. Sir Lord Travis, it takes everything in my will to not pause after I say the episode number. I just have to, I, I have to plow through every week. It's the same thing because I'm used to that pause on bad crypto. But this is not bad crypto. This is the Nifty Show. This is. And I, I just want to say this too, because I know that we missed one major thing right off the bat in the teaser. Did we mention anything about WAX being listed on Binance? Because that is so huge. <laughs> we didn't. In fact, we don't even have that story in here. But that's now our lead story for this episode. <laughs> and producer Aaron will find that story and link it in the show notes that you're going to be able to go to at nifty.show forward slash 86. Uh, WAX is on Binance now. And I don't have a story to link for that, but uh, it's international only, not U.S., because here in the U.S., we need the government to hold our hands and tell us what we can and can't buy because they're all a bunch of shady, power-hungry bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you are an international user, then you can go to Binance.com and you can now trade WAXP, I uh, believe for USDT, BTC, and ETH, maybe? But this is huge because it shot the price of wax. Ba-boom. I, I was on, this is two nights ago, I think, and we're recording here on Tuesday, the 24th of August. Um, I happen to be on Atomic Market, at Atomic Hub, and I always have my main screen that shows, you know, my inventory up on one of my browsers. And you can see there the amount you've sold and uh, the correspond in wax and the corresponding amount of US dollar. And I kind of look at that to gauge as wax going up or down. And I noticed this huge rise. And I thought that's gotta be a fluke. You know, one of those weird spikes, those weird candles that hit every now and then that aren't legit yeah, yeah. and I refreshed. And it was real. I'm like, oh damn, wax went from like 17 cents to 32 cents. What's happening? And so that's when I went um, and to uh, Wax's Discord, and I saw that they indeed announced the next morning, which was um, Monday, they'd be listing on Binance. It got as high as 47 cents, Travis. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm looking at this. So, so that, that really blows me away. And I'm sitting here looking at this. We're going to cover this now as well. You know, CoinGecko has has changed their NFT page, and they're actually listing some of the top NFT collections on this. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at what's happened on volume for Blockchain Heroes, the the series that we have, you know, it's like five point five million dollars worth of wax has gone through. That is essentially one thousand five hundred and seventy one ETH worth, which on this list right here. Well, it would be lower because we would have to add all the other ones like Alien Worlds and Our Planet and Tops and Bitcoin Origins and and those. But we're in the we're in the top thirty overall collections out of all. If we if we have ETH and Wax included on here, we're in the top thirty. Blockchain Heroes is of all these all these collections, which I think is pretty cool. Plus, well, because the price of Wax has, has gone up nicely, but that's uh, it's been pretty interesting to watch this whole thing. We've been doing um, the Tuesday edition, really just audio only, but now this is a full video show as well. Uh, so if you're looking at the video on YouTube or on library.tv, which is now Odyssey, if you like decentralized video, you can see here WaxP presently at uh, almost 34 cents. And uh, in this chart here, take a look at this. This is over the last 24 hours. Let's just, let's zoom way out here for a moment and take a look at the max. Now, this is deceiving because this is back in 2018 when WAX was an Ethereum-based token, right? Mm -hmm. And then they did their token swap. And there was very few of them released at the time too, right? So that was part of the thing is that you see that big spike, but there just wasn't as many tokens released into the wild at that time. Yeah, so this is not really, uh, you know, what's happening here is not totally in line but if you look here what you'll see is wax you know hovered around three four cents popped up to nine boom, boom, boom picked up in uh 20 in early 2021 and you could see here we've been up to like 30 cents and went down but check out the last 
this last week here. Look at this from Boom. 18 cents, pow, pow to 44. And yeah. in nothing flat and the volume is huge. And now people all over the world are able to trade in wax. And of course it's pull, it has to pull back from that kind of rise. I expect more pullback into the, I 20s. was so tempted to sell a whole bunch in the 40 range and then rebuy back. But I, I just didn't, I was like, you know what, let's let it ride. Because with it being on Binance now, as you mentioned, more and more people are going to become aware of it and it creates a whole lot more liquidity. That's yeah. the valuable part of this. This is going to be ginormous for the wax ecosystem. And we started this show nifty show as big proponents of the wax ecosystem. And here we are 80 some odd episodes in and Binance finally, finally, finally does it. Like, I don't know how many tweets, I, you, you know, CZ follows me. I don't know how many times I've tweeted to him. Hey, what about wax? What about wax? And now that Binance is doing more NFT stuff, you know, I just think it just makes sense that they should include them. And I'm glad they did because I think that's going to bode well long-term for the price of wax and the wax ecosystem and the wax nfts that are already in the wild as more mm -hmm. people discover atomic hub and some of the other platforms and nefty here's the change that came to coingecko.com this week when you go to nft it used to just be this it used to just pop up nft coins and we cover this every week of course theta is always on top axie is killing it chili's engine flow decentraland audius ultra Ecomi um, and Sandbox and there's wax right there, you know, pop, pop, popping up alien worlds right down here, but they've added this NFTs and collectibles. This is new. And now you can see NFT collections by trading volumes over a 24 hour period. And so this is interesting. This one came out of nowhere this last week. ON one force pudgy penguins. Are huge. I don't know anything about the community or why these have taken off so much. Thirty ETH for one of those. Look at the highest sale price. The highest sale, Good yeah. Lord. Yeah, here's your averages. This is what you want to look at. Your floor price. So the cheapest that you can get one now is two point nine ETH, as opposed to a bored ape that's at twenty five ETH. CryptoPunks for whatever reason isn't tracking, but I think the floor for those is even higher. And uh, we'll be talking, actually, we've got in the news something about uh, Tools of Rock today and maybe a couple of the other sets that we, uh, that we see in here. But this is a really interesting tool that, uh, that you're going to want to reference to see what's hot. Unfortunately, right now, they're just tracking Ethereum, uh, but generative projects are starting to pop on WAX, and I think those will be tracked in the future. Yeah, and this, it's really, these is mostly right here, folks. That's just generative. It's not NFT collections. They're nft generative collections that's all those are those there's nothing on there that i see that's not generative is uh is the collection we popped on this week the art one the the cards what were those called the art the playing cards yeah i don't see the playing cards in here oh no yeah 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 no those are the, the playingarts.com was that website right there yeah, I think I would think they would be because they were just this last week. So they're missing stuff, too. They're not tracking yeah. everything. But it is interesting. Uh, here's uh, the big NFT news for the week. Besides wax listing on Binance Visa called a publicity stunt. If you want to call it visionary, call it straight up dope, whatever it is. Visa. Yes, that Visa bought a crypto punk for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and made a big stink about it right to the world to let the, the world know that visa is jumping in nfts and so how travis do you think that a credit card company is going to be able to leverage the whole nft concept what do you think they're thinking about mm. well <laughs> that's that's an interesting question that i don't know that i have does that answer right off the top of my head i think they're going to be doing a lot of different things i think that what we'll probably see down the road are uh, sort of some some NFT index fund type of things. We've been talking about that down the road where like, these are my NFTs. Like, I don't know how many how much value of NFTs that I have on WAX. And then I, I know I got a ton of value of my NFTs on ETH. Like, I think there's going to become a point where it's like, you can utilize some of those as collateral in some ways, right? Where there's a smart contract, sort of like NFT DeFi kind of stuff. We're going to see more and more of that. But I just think that, you know, them jumping on and buying an NFT says, hey, look, look, we're trying to be cool. We're trying to be with it. It shows that they're thinking about crypto 
more and more. And the, the head of crypto at Visa said this, I think NFTs will play an important role in the future of retail, social, and something else. But you just scrolled by, and so I didn't see it. So he scrolled, and I missed it. Uh, yeah, but I'm a super scroller. A, yeah, you habitual scroller. Yeah. And uh, who, who knows? I mean, I think that we're going to see the evolution of credit taking place over here, here shortly. I know we, we see the, the de-evolution of, of social credit in China. Hopefully, we don't get to the point like that here in America where, oh, you talked bad about the government. You've lost 10 points on your social score. Oh, no, you're friends with Joel Com. That lowers your credit score. But hopefully, they actually use some of your real-world assets and stuff instead um, of the draconian one that's going on over in China. Excuse me. Why would that lower their score? If they were friends with me, that should increase their score. <laughs> Well, you have you have unsavory um, political thoughts. You have thought viruses. I, I have thoughts. Yeah. With our crypto punk purchase, we're jumping in feet first. This is just the beginning of our work in the space, says the dude responsible. I always find this funny. But some critics are skeptical of NFTs. So, OK, immediately I picture somebody who doesn't produce anything on their own except opinion. Right. When you're mm -hmm. when you're a critic. Uh, these are the same, the critics are the ones that said, you know, we don't need a car, a horse and buggy is fine. The world will never need more than two computers, right? These are the critics. This is the, the, the lineage of the critic. And so immediately when I see that, I laugh and go, they can be skeptical all they want. Guess what? They're the Peter Schiff of, of NFTs uh, because they're completely missing the boat. And honestly, I don't care what you think. If you don't mm -hmm. think these are going to be big yeah. and There's game a reason they're called critics. Critic. <laughs> yeah, and here's another indicator: <laughs> OpenSea, the first NFT marketplace to pass a billion dollars in monthly trading volume. We talked about this last week. It's making mainstream news now uh, here, and wow, that's a lot of transactions. And you know, I saw something monthly, really monthly volume, not not accumulative, not over the course of, you know, since January. No, we're talking monthly. Like that, that is a huge increase. And in, it increased 286% from July to August. And I think that's because we're seeing more of these generative things sort of popping up mm -hmm. and more people wanting to participate. Like yesterday, like the tools of rock thing happened, but they went so quickly that I was like, oh damn, well, I need to go get one on OpenSea. And so right. that's basically where people are going. Like OpenSea is the place where you go to get NFTs that are on Ethereum. If there are any of these generators, like you go there first. So that there, they have that mover advantage right there that I think is huge. So here's gonna, another gonna, thing that's, growing. this is driving secondary market too. This is really brilliant. The guys at Nifty Gateway, first of all, they redid the site. So it's a little sleeker now. I haven't poked around too long, but they're doing this two day thing called the secondary summer slam. They're rebating all Nifty Gateway fees, 5% back to the seller. And there these Nifties here, there's 150 of them in these different categories. They're rewarding them to the top 150 spenders. So they're encouraging secondary market activity right now and everybody on this list is currently qualified to get one of these exclusive nfts from their thing so <laughs> they're they're driving directly driving secondary market they're saying go spend money on art that you like and the more you spend the better nft we will reward you with i think it's really interesting and it's good to see they've redone their site no, I think it's, I think that's really awesome. And uh, I need to, my, my password's acting weird on this. So I want to see, cause I know that I've spent just on the secondary market period buying those freaking Kobe NFTs. <laughs> right. But that, that doesn't count. It's only during this 48 hour period. Oh, it's only it's, during this yeah. 48 hours. Are you doing Yeah. That? You don't rank unless you've bought anything, you know, starting a, an hour or so ago. Uh, so more big names getting into the space. Logan Paul throwing away money on NFTs, not throwing away. I mean, here's here's the thing. Logan Paul tweeted, and I think this is kind of tacky, something this last week, just spent, you know, a million dollars on NFTs. And I'm like, you know, I, that's not something I would brag about. Maybe that's personal preference, but I, I feel like whenever I see people uh, flexing about how much they're making in crypto or how much they're spending on NFTs, I just, it's just a red flag for immaturity 
and in a lack of wisdom. A well, I think it's also it's like you know, a lot of those a lot of those folks maybe they grew up and they were like trying to impress others and be like, hey, look how cool I am. You know, there's a little bit of insecurity there, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you got you, you don't need to flex if you have you know if you don't have those insecurities. I think so. A lot of these guys, I think, even though that they're big and they're doing great stuff, like. You don't need to flex about that. There's some people that we see on Instagram and on Facebook, like talking about, oh my God, I'm a millionaire now. Oh yeah. my God, I got $500,000 worth of this. Oh my God, my NFTs. Are... I'm like, dude, chill. Nobody cares. It makes you look like a douche when you're, it's like a cry for attention. It, it makes like. you, it, it, it looks like a cry for attention. It screams, I'm an emotional child. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, so what? Why put so much value on, um, on money? Like maybe you got to get older to realize that money don't mean dick. Once you get paid, this is really bugging me, by the way, if you're watching my screen, this messenger thing on NFT radar keeps freaking popping up and it's making me nuts. I'm like, no, I closed it. Well, guess what? Move your mouse around for a second. Well, yeah, there it is. It just jumped back up again. All right. I'm leaving the story just for that reason. If for no, now, how can reason. we help you? You log into messenger, <clears throat> say, stop your fucking chat bot. Then. Yeah. Stop, stop making it pop up. Um, Every, we want everybody to do well. We want all projects, if they're doing good and producing content uh, and value for others to succeed, which is why we support this space so vehemently, and which is why we also buy lots of things, but I'm not going to go out there flexing how much I've spent or how much money I've made on a, a certain coin. Not only it, does it look make you look insecure, um, and like you need approval, but it puts a huge target on your back, dummy. Like why in the world that this is for me, why I don't, I'm not a flashy person. I mean, I wear shorts and t-shirt around all day here in Puerto Rico. I have mm -hmm. flip-flops I wear. It's very rare. I even put on pants um, and I don't need to be flashy, but unless you have a love for cars, I never understood people that buy you know, Lambos and Ferraris just to be seen. Look at me. I'm driving a Lambo or Ferrari. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't by buying like a 1968 Camaro or something, or like a Dodge Char old school charger or GTO, like you get a badass old school car. And then that, that's a cool flex. Like I almost did that. I, I remember I almost did that in 2018 when crypto went high and I was like, you know what? I should almost just get this car and use that as an investment. Cause it'll probably go up in time. And instead my crypto tanked. So when crypto, crypto goes, goes, up, goes crypto high goes down it's a big dick contest if you're black bragging about all these things that you do who cares just you know what live life and have fun and be kind when crypto goes high we go low <laughs> 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 so here's another story from nft radar and i'm not logging in to tell them to stop making this thing pop up but it is pissing me you off it's so weird anybody... i don't know why yours is doing that mine's not doing that i think maybe it's a brave issue uh i don't care fix it people fix it. I've even got my, my shields down. Uh, it's talking about how some of these images are worth more than homes. Ether rock number 87 was purchased for $611,000 ether rock. It's a rock. It, it, it's literally a rock. Ether? Like Look at the price of these me bits. Wow. Um, gift, uh, this gift goat went for $60,000. I think he undersold yeah how 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 tough is that when you say oh yeah well i've had on my gift goat like we paid we paid the base price for because we were in the sale and i've had as high as like 25 eth offered for one for my gift goat but i'm like nope i'm not selling that thing for anything less than 33.333 eth but because he's going to be having all kinds of cool there's going to be all kinds of cool gifts supposedly mm -hmm. coming out on that it's one of the only nfts out on ETH that I've seen so far that has real world utilities attached to it. And I think that is really great. While wow, these art blocks, man, these are going for high. Like it, 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 the prices on some of these things are just unbelievable. And if you were lucky enough to snag one or had the foresight enough, it's not luck. It's just, do you have the foresight enough to pick up some of these? And uh, you know what? I, if they, if they look cool, I'm going to go and grab one. If they're, if, if that's, that's the take to me. It's like, if I like it, like I did like board apes, but I didn't see them. Like I, to me, I did I, like for somehow we have this show board apes totally slipped onto the radar. Why? Because there wasn't rarity tools yet. 
There wasn't nifty. No, it's because you guys audio, didn't yet. tell us about it. You gotta and write you guys us. Didn't tell us about it. Write us the nifty show at gmail.com and let us know what's coming. Now they wrote us directly from this project. A woman wrote me to tell me about this story. There's a, a generative project called the Fame Lady Squad that sold out. It was it was claimed that it was founded entirely by women, right? It was supposed to be an all female team, the first female avatar project of all time. Well, guess what? They found out that it was actually three Russian men. We found fame lady squad. We are the ones who did it. You could buy images of the ladies uh, used to represent on social media platforms. It made $1.5 million in sale. You can see here, Cindy, Kelda, Andrea, turns out three Russian men were the ones who have done it. And hey, now, hey, hey, it's 2021. Like they can identify as women and they yep. did. Well, apparently it pissed some people off because That's they the felt world, they felt misled. And so there are new owners now and the new owners are women uh, okay. or at least people who identify as women. And so, uh, so that's the thing. And there you go. I, I, personally, I, I don't like when people lie to me, but mm -hmm. if you like the art, you like the art, right? Buy, buy what you like, cause you like it. That that's, true. that's my take on it. Well, I mean, and, and so they, but they were going for, you know, the thing like, Hey, check it out. Only women have done this. We're an all women team. Like they were using that to hype up the $1.5 million in sales. Right. So it's like, yeah, very disingenuous for sure. Uh, Anna Mocha in the news again with Limpo. In fact, we just had that interview recently with, uh, with Ada from uh, Limpo and uh, they're doing some cool stuff here. And I have not had a chance to look at this release fully yet, but apparently they're auctioning goat NFTs, not like Gary's gift goat, greatest of all time from uh, various um, sporting and athletes. Uh, they're going to be auctioning off a bunch of these. And I I've bought a bunch of stuff on Limpo, which uh, again, the name, not my favorite, but uh, the NFTs they're producing over there are pretty cool. And if you haven't had a chance to watch that interview, I believe it was, uh, was it on the last episode? It was. Yeah. Well, and, and we asked about that because we said nobody likes anything that's limp. She yeah. said, no, but it's like from Olympic. Yes. So Olympia. So, it's like so they could have just called it pus. <laughs> they could have called it pus. The pus token. Yeah, it's the Olympus. More metaverses are popping up around the NFT space, and it's not going to be long before we're going to see NFTs that we are purchasing today brought into the various metaverses, whether they're Sandbox or Crypto Voxels or Decentraland or Star Atlas or any of the other number of places and metaverses that are going to be built. It's coming, and now um, this AI firm has raised $16 million to create an AI metaverse they're calling it the first intelligent nft because we make stupid nfts but these, mm. these are intelligent <laughs> I, I actually came up with a term around that the other day that, is, that maybe actually i won't say it here because maybe i'll buy the domain but yeah so so we're gonna start seeing more of these smart nfts popping up and with with ai blockchain crypto art like it's it's a no-brainer this is happening and these NFTs will unlock cool, unique things. And so it's like, they're going to be able to verify this is in your, this is in your wallet. Then that, that allows you to earn this or do that. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully like crypto punks and bored apes do that. Because as far as I know, there is zero utility for those, right? You know, yes. I, I no, I think bored apes has something. There's some sort of wall you can write on or something. It's like a status thing. They, they've got some sort of membership thing. We covered these guys last week, and I'm reminded of the Hammer Dragon Winery because they claim to be the only NFT collection with AI. And I wrote the guy and I said, How, what are you doing? And he showed me, like, if you have a Hammer Dragon in your wallet, you're going to be able to talk to it. And it reminds me at the very early phases of personal computing there was an ai tool called eliza it was like a, a psych psychotherapist and you'd be able to say you know whatever you're feeling and would ask you a question back you say i'm sad I'm like why are you feeling sad well i didn't get to go do this or that oh tell me more about that right well these guys have developed um an ai tool that if you're holding a dragon you're going to be able to talk to your dragon through this texting system. So these other folks aren't really the first AI metaverse. This is very rudimentary, but I still love the artwork of this and they've got a lot of them that are available. So 
Um, it's not paid for, but hammerdragonwinery.com is where you can go to check those out. I offered to send Gary V one because if anybody deserves a dragon with wine, it's him. <laughs> I mean, anything with wine, you'd think Gary would would want one of those. Yeah, and it, it's just, it's this to me. This is one of the ones that I think is one of the coolest and most interesting ones, right? These, these, these dragons are awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, it, it blows me away that some of these that don't have utility blow up. Like, what the hell is a pudgy penguin doing? Like, is it being pudgy? Is it, they're pudgy. pudgy. They're cute. Sure. I don't Whatever. know. What's, three let's... ETH? They're worth $10,000 right now, really? Like, and then these dragons, which are cool, and the artwork is badass, is like, there's still a shit ton of them left? Like, I don't even understand. Yeah, there's music that plays when you hit the website. I'm not a big fan of that. Like when you hit a website and immediately it's like, uh, you know, what if I'm doing hot something? sauce? Oh, oh, that's wine. They're drinking their wine. I got to drink. Yeah, they're drinking their wine. Hammer, HDW, Hammer Dragon Winery. They're all getting absolutely wasted mm -hmm. here. Anyway, nice team there. Good guys. And you could mint some up there. Uh, Travis, this one I think is right up your alley because it's your man, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, so check this out. This these are some um, previously unreleased photos of Kobe. I think it's from his disco era. It looks like the shirt right there. Yeah, uh, they're gonna be auctioned off as Ethereum NFTs. And whoa, I just had a big ass helicopter or something fly by. That was loud. So it's gonna benefit the Mamba and Mamba Sita Sports Foundation. Mamba Sita is uh, Kobe's daughter, uh, and they passed away in in that helicopter crash. And this is gonna actually benefit a lot of young women. So. Uh, Kobe Bryant Day was established to celebrate the late NBA star, and uh, this uh, this platform, Cryptograph, is going to be releasing a bunch of cool NFTs of Kobe. And I looks you know like what? eight of them. And, and, I, and I tell you, my favorite NFT. Let me actually. Speaking of oh, you got your um, your your uh, your object there, your infinite object. Here's We're gonna my have infinite object if you can see that right there. Yeah, for so everyone. And also behind me, there's Kobe. Right there, and then right beside him is is young Michael Jordan. I got the rookie Michael Jordan guarding the old Kobe, and then over here I got the rookie Kobe guarding Michael Jordan. But you can't see, but he's hanging out right over there. But I love this right here. This is actually one of those NFTs that you can yeah. go get on Nifty Gateway right now because there's 489 of them. Go get one, and uh, and you can start uh, getting some of those extra bonuses. I guess so I'm gonna yeah, we're Kobe actually I like Kobe being right there. On uh, this uh, Thursday's live Nifty show, we've got Joe from Infinite Objects. They're the ones that make, that put your NFTs in those frames. Uh, and so uh, that's going to be cool to, to have him. And on. if you don't own that NFT, you can't get it in a frame. They almost tried to pull that with me, but I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got three of these Kobe's. <laughs> Come I on. Want th give me three frames. Damn it. Three frames of these. So this is uh, interesting. Uh, Till Lindemann is the front man for the German metal band Rammstein. And apparently um, there is some NFTs that are being um, uh, sold that are illegitimate. And uh, this is this. What are they selling here? Let's see. Digital. Well, they're selling it. He filmed the video for his solo song, Lubimi Gorod, which means beloved town. And that, that song was first performed in 1939 by Mark Burns. And uh, they've used it in a movie. And I guess they made that, they, they were dubbing that into a movie, but they didn't own the rights to it or something. Is that what happened? It's, it's not good. Just recently, it turned out that Lindemann's releasing a series of NFTs with digital images taken inside the Hermitage during the shooting period. Any use of images of items from the museum's collections and of its interior in the collection of tokens supplied with logo has not been agreed and could not be agreed with the museum. So I don't think they're being sold um, illegitimately. I think that uh, the museum is saying, hey, you can't shoot stuff in here that has museum pieces in it right? Mm -hmm. The, the backgrounds of what's on those NFTs, like you can't sell those as NFTs. That's, that's the scoop here. There it is. Don't be selling NFTs. Don't be filming stuff in, in museums and then trying to sell NFTs with them in the background. This is huge news gang. I know the whole world is waiting to learn about this here on cryptonews.com, but the cryptocurrency girls are back and they've created an NFT themed music video. Um, I'm tempted to play a little bit of this to see. So, you know, if, if YouTube wants to demonetize us, 
for this. That's fine. I don't care. I have to see what this is. Here we go. Japanese J-pop group. You'll accept the Bitcoin. Here they go. It's the cryptocurrency girls. Here we are finally in the Edo. I got a board in. I got a board in. <laughs> okay, I'm forwarding to the song a little bit. So they're explaining about NFTs in their song. There you go. Not quite yeah, the, the Saturday Night Live version, but definitely. I'm, I'm a it, fan. I'm a fan. I like they won me over. That's it. You guys can go check out the uh, the video in the show notes. NFT the world. They sing in English. They speak in Japanese, but they sing mm. in English. Uh, Very nice. <laughs> also in the news here um, on Forbes. In fact, this is about as mainstream. It's Florida. As it gets. Yeah, that is Flow Rider, isn't yeah. it? Very nice. Flow Rider. They're creating this thing called ENFTs, immersive entertainment. Uh, it's going to be the future of music streaming. And uh, so you got Flow Rider there, and you got some other dudes that have co founded this thing. And they're going to be creating this augmented reality thing with digital and physical tokens, as well as expanding into the NFT space. And they own e nft.com is the website. And apparently, you can buy NFTs for a dollar. Okay, I'll take an NFT for I'll buy anything for a dollar, honestly, like there there's stuff like just just make an NFT of it. And for a dollar, I'm in. I, I, I don't like even sandwich. care. I, I, don't, I don't even care. Like if I, you know what, I'll just I'll say this. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna leave that we might have to go back to that again <laughs> so dead mouse uh, speaking of music releasing the next set of nfts on wax ver, uh, via raries i thought it was rares but i, I guess it's raries um which is created by emanate they've been on this show before and series two is coming out the first series sold out there's new mega packs and standard packs that are launching on wax thursday August 26th at seven o'clock Eastern time. And uh, I'll be in line to get some of these because I think they're cool. I still, I still hodling packs. These, these from the are first cool. Set. Now remember, remember last time they had a sale. I remember it was kind of going slow. And then the, the, the blue wizard came in and snagged a whole bunch of them. But if you're actually looking at this, looking at the dead mouse collection on wax, you can see that those packs on there are going for a nice pretty penny still. And so these are, that's series one. A lot of these different cards have some pretty high value. And uh, what is it? The packs, the, the card packs right now, let's see the, the lowest price, the lowest price of card packs now. So the standard pack, which had five cards in, it, I think is uh, 60 bucks a piece. And then what about that secondary pack? Oh, the lowest one for the mega pack is $134 for that. Nice. One. So that's, that's they held their call. value pretty good. Yeah. And I think there'll be more demand for them uh, in the future, especially if, you know, when, when you see somebody do a release, it's like, okay, they tried something. When they do a second release, it's like, all right, they're serious about this and they've probably got a long-term plan. And that's where I pay attention. Like, ah, they're in it to win it. What are they going to do next? And I have a hunch that part of the plan will be to bring continued value to what they've already released. Not a mm. financial advisor, just a hunch. Yeah. So check this out. So this, <clears throat> I think these are the same prices as last time, $10 for the, <clears throat> the regular pack, which are now going for $60. And then the mega packs were $30 and they're now going for $130. 
And so, and then what, what, what did it say that there was that one car that sold for over $10,000? Yeah, there was that? one. I, I don't know which one it was, but one of the collector's items in there sold for $10,000. So very nice. Good job. Dead mouse. All right, Travis, let's hit the floor. The boom, the floor. Let the the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. What's the NFTs that are going to hit the floor? That's true. We don't, because it, it's easier to clean up NFTs off the floor than bodies. And you can't, I don't know how people sing like that with that screamo voice. I mean, talk well, about I can tell you, they don't sing for long. No, destroy a couple them. albums, like maybe a couple tours, and, and then, you're, <laughs> then done. you're done. Then it's like, now I'm going to get into Whisper Rock. Let the bodies, <laughs> let the bodies hit the floor. So, uh, a, a few uh, different projects that we want to spotlight this week again aped into them and uh feel like they're doing some cool stuff one of them that caught my attention is the goons of balatroon uh, what i saw this and this reminded me of the old school image maps that we had when we first built the web this is kind of interactive to take interactive mm -hmm. to take you to the different parts of the site but the goons um they live in balatroon they're bullas and bears b-a-r-s and they, there's two different sides to it. They're going to be using these generative NFTs for cartoons, comics, and peer uh, play to earn gaming with a PVP battle game. I think as of now, they are uh, a little more than half sold out. But the thing that really got my attention is that they're serious about this game. Every goon that you own entitles you to a 40 NFT pack of cards. That's a that's a lot of NFTs for buying one. Mm. So now are those going to be on ERC twenty as well? Because how in the hell could you drop a pack of forty NFTs on Ethereum and not cost a ridiculous amount of money? ERC seven twenty one is what it says right here. So yeah. I'm not exactly sure. I, I know they're probably not at at that point yet, right? This is still um, the early phase, and there's a whole roadmap here of what they intend to accomplish with it. There you go, community expansion, and then gaming so when i see roadmaps like this i go okay these aren't just cute generative avatars i know there's a lot of people in the space that are in it just to go what can i buy and flip for a profit and that's fine but then there are those that there's a lot of these that have really developed communities with a lot of people in them like if i go to the goons um let's see their discord they have almost 6,000 members in there. Like these are people that are interested in playing the game and, and getting into the role playing aspect of, uh, of this project. And I just, I really like that. There's a, a lot here on the roadmap. I encourage you to go to getagoon.com. Check these out again. I, I Get a goon. <laughs> That's way better than goons of balatroon.com. Like, Just go to our website at goons at balatroon.com. Like, what the hell the hell do you spell that? Get a goon. But so, like, so check this out. So if, if you're looking at the goons of Balatroon, that's a that's a verified collection. Mm -hmm. There are 6,131 of them so far. The floor price is actually coincidentally less than the than the mint price right now. Well, that, that doesn't surprise me when uh, stuff has been revealed already, but there's still a bunch of rare ones that are in there. And that's when you're buying a, a, um, a blind box, you don't know what you're going to get. And a lot of people are hoping that they are able to pull something that's super rare. So you know, they, I just they, don't ever even notice even whether what's super rare or not on them, really. I just like, is, does it look cool? Is it interesting to me? Like, all right, I want that one, right? Oh. It's like, it's, it's, it's hard to figure out which ones. I mean, you can go on rarity tools and look and see which ones are rarer and stuff. And, but I, I think a lot of times it's like, all right, cool. I got a cool one. This is entertaining to me. I like, Oh, them. I always go after I look at them and see if I like it or not, I click into it and I go to properties and what you're looking for are 1% or lower in traits to know if you've got something rare. So the reason this one is selling it so inexpensively, well, this one's up for auction uh, is <laughs> because Oh, that's not an expensive, actually. That's that that's an expensive one right there. Uh, is this is not particularly rare, right? You're looking for the ones that have so if you if you're not familiar, let's just go from high to low. We'll reverse this here on open C so you can see what a rarer one might look like. So this guy thinks his is rare because he's asking 15,000 ETH for it. He probably just wants to show it off. I mean, that's only 48 million dollars. Never gonna happen, my friend. 
Um, but I don't see anything particularly rare about this. Even having one of the attributes at 1% definitely wouldn't merit that kind of price on it. Maybe this guy here. He's a bear with like a, um, let's see, 1% arrow. Yep, yeah, not, not particularly rare either. This is why you have to go to rarity tools rarity.tools. And then they actually, I think they just listed here the, um, let's see, goons. Yep, there they are. Goons of Bellatrun on rarity tools. And you can see here, okay, this is the rarest one. So let's see what makes him so rare. There he is. It's the goons of Bellatrun. Okay, so, okay, here you go. The broken horns, only 0.05% have this trait and only 0.55% have the gold double hoop earring. And if you click on it, you can then see, see there's only three so far that have been minted that have this broken um, trait here, this, this horn that's broken. And that's why this is the rarest one that's out there. Yeah. There you go, a little so then, then you start seeing bids on that and people starting uh, to, to put offers on them and hoping that they don't realize that uh, that's a super rare one and they just sell it and go, oh yeah, I'll sell that for two ETH, hell yeah. Uh, here's another one. You know, it's funny. I said at the beginning, a bunch of words and one of them was bacon. That was the word that is not part of the show, but guess what? It is part of the show because uh, oinks backyard barbecue collect oinks on the ethereum blockchain these are 0.04 eth and uh, besides these being cute cartoons what i like about these is they're going to have farming associated with them there's going it's to be, be great you can literally pick your nft on these things pick out your oink and then you slice it up and then you can have some pork chops you get some nft pork chops you get some nft bacon and it's good. Like, remember my cool <laughs> oink NFT I had? Well, now I got oink bacon. I got bacon. And then you can put it on an oink hamburger. Your oink will be your entry pass for farming daily coins to exchange prizes, liquidate, and other features to do with your oinks. The rarer your oink is, the more it will yield in the near future. So, you know, they've got, in the early parts of roadmaps, it's not unusual to do a giveaway. In this case, they're giving away oink number 100. Then they're giving, you know, when they hit 25%, they're giving out some early ones. It's when they get down here, they start giving away portions to charity and they act as a DAO. So the community votes on what charity those are going to go to they're going to create merchandise with, with pictures and um and then they're going to go beyond there and build out farming so uh you know i'm i i like them i think they're cute i i oinked in there's uh there's still plenty of them available for you to mint at oinks backyard bbq.com mm -hmm. go check it out Oinks. Now let's talk about this one, Trav. Backyard barbecue, baby. Not the real backyard barbecue, because that is a hamburger joint. You ever been there? Backyard barbecue. They have some delicious hamburgers. I, I think, actually, those are some of the most delicious hamburgers, but I don't know why they, they keep getting shut down. Every backyard barbecue that I've seen, or is it backyard burgers? No, it's backyard barbecue, I think is what it is. But, uh, yeah, here, these are oinks right here. And uh, what the next one that you're talking about right here, yeah, the tools of rock. This is one that we were, that we were talking about. We like to go through... You know, uh, rarity tools, see which one's coming up, the nifty drops.io, some of these other platforms, the wax guide and others. And this is one that we saw, we said, wait, look at these generative art pieces around music, but it's not a character. This is one of the very first ones I think that we've seen like this, right, Joel? Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely unique and stands out and sold out in no time. Uh, they had early access for VIPs, I guess, people who were early part of their community. And then the public sale, there was only like 1500 left and, and I couldn't compete. I had to buy some off the secondary market, as did you. But the, they are definitely you've got these nine different traits that can be part of it. And uh, actually, if we go to the official open C let's see tools of rock here we go yeah then you'll see because this is one thing guys to be real careful about when you're dealing with nfts because there's a lot of scammers out there and scam they're going to go out scam. and try to create multiple different accounts you can see tools of rock exclamation point it only has 52 items those are fake you got to find the real one that has all of the items on it because most scammers are not you know, you know, they're not going to go out and download all of them and upload all of them because they don't have the time to do that in time. So this, you got to make sure you find the right one because you can easily buy a fake NFT and have it not and, and be host. 
Ooh, look at that one. I like that one right there. That's that's cool with the America, the American flag on it. Silver vinyl. Click on the properties. Let's see how rare those are. No, screw that. I want it. I'm buying it. It's gone. It's mine. (laughs) You were going to grab it, weren't you? Too late. Uh, I want to get one that has has an American pick on it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the American pick. So these are just, they're really cool. Now, what I'm curious is how are they going to be used? Uh, Tools of Rock serves as your backstage pass. So if you own three Tools of Rock, which I now do, I bought three off the secondary market, you'll receive the VIP pass. This will occur approximately two weeks after launch. And then that's your ticket to future utility and benefits. Access to Sandbox. They're going to build a a concert venue in the Sandbox. Uh, Apparently, you're going to be able to get some sort of avatar that you can use in the Sandbox for these concerts. I, just, I dig it. I, I like it. These guys were creative and uh, yeah, they're not cheap, but um, I, yep. I'd like everything about it. It's music. I love it. I, this one right here. Cause we, we were talking about this. We said, you know what? Nobody's done yet. Would be like a cool artistic one where you could take a background that some artist creates and then layer on something else on it. And then, and when we were thinking it through, like how, how could you do that effectively where it doesn't look like a hodgepodge and it, it looks kind of shitty. You know what I mean? Like you, it's like, oh, great, here's here's a design, and here's a shape, and here's this. They did this flawlessly. You have a frame, you have a background, you have a pick, you have a pick shape, you have a vinyl, you have an album cover, then you have a, you, maybe if you're lucky enough, you have a, a numbered nameplate on it. And then if you see in the lower right corner is their rock history piece right there. So you can see that, like, this is maybe, like, something that, that, that happened during that year that relates to the rock history. And then sometimes you'll have a vinyl label on your album there so if you have one of each that's very rare but then there's also some that don't have any and they're all gold and they're they're super rare as well i i like looking at some of the ones that were super rare i mean look at how beautiful those things come out man like really nice sort of they are beautiful i love these the only thing i wish the only thing that i wish is that these were in some ways they had them where they were uh vertical instead of horizontal because then when when i showed them on my wall like it could be like but I could probably turn them, but I'd rather have them where they were, you know, at least where I could, the, the pick was going in the right direction. Or just because. turn your frame the other way. I, I could turn my frame, but then the pick's looking weird. It's not pointing down. You're looking oh. weird. Oh. oh, no. So that's the floor. Uh, again, we encourage you to go to wax.guide to see drops that are coming up. Megadeth is coming to wax on August 27th. So that one, they just announced this uh, this mm. morning, I believe. Hello, yeah. me. Meet the real me. Get an NFT of me. These are pretty fast <laughs> looking. Check those out. Well, dude, nice. think about it. Like we, we we commented about this guy too. I think it was no, it was Iron Maiden that would make really badass NFTs mm-hmm. because they have their little guy and all their different album covers. Like they should have that little character guy, whatever his name is, and he has a name. And I guess this guy Megadeth has a name too. Dude, I'm totally buying some freaking Megadeth ones. I got to put yeah, that on these, my calendar. These sure. look these look badass for sure. So check that out. Make sure you go to niftydrops.io as well to see upcoming drops from both ETH and uh, Wax and Polygon. Uh, Now, we've got some uh, some big news to share from our friends at niftyblocks.com, Sir Lord Travis. They are the second most popular marketplace and the most popular place for creators to make, mint, and drop their NFTs on the Wax blockchain. They've got some big news, and we had the opportunity to interview Juan from Nefty Blocks, and we're going to go to that interview right here now. Up until a few months ago, there was uh, really Atomic Hub was the main player in town if you wanted to create, mint, and sell your NFTs. But because the Atomic Assets smart contract is public, others are able to build upon it. And out of seemingly nowhere, a site called neftyblocks.com has become a true leader in the space by creating a, a venue for creators to mint their NFTs and package their NFTs in a number of ways that really require custom work from Atomic in order to make it happen. Nefty has made it really a, a simple thing to do now. I've done it a couple times myself with Crazy Eggs and with Bro Punks. And with us today, we have one of the founders 
of Nefty Blocks, Mr. Juan Paniagua, which I found out means bread and water. Uh, welcome to the Nifty Show, good sir. Uh, thank you, Joel. Thanks for having me here. I, I told him before. Name. I didn't I said, realize that. Yeah, now being here, here in, uh, in uh, Puerto Rico and seeing more Spanish, that is totally bread and water. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. Yes. You know, I, I would prefer it to be bread and wine, but yeah, we don't get to choose our names. So, <laughs> Pan yeah. vino. Pan vino. Pan vino, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So yourself and uh, your partner, Jose, have created Nefty Blocks, and th this is a really great platform. I really enjoy creating on it because now I can mint my tokens, I can sell my tokens, but also I can create packs with, you know, with drops in them and percentages, and I can do blends, you know, for my upgrades. So what gave you guys the idea to create Nefty Blocks? Well, like many things, this uh, was uh, created out of uh, necessity. We started like uh, only a platform to, uh, well, to create tools to make collection, uh, collections life easier um, because we needed that for our own collection, but it quickly uh, evolved and uh, the community really accepted it well. And, um, and yeah, it, uh, it became what, um, what it is today, a platform where we have uh, drops and blends and many uh, tools for, uh, from, for, uh, for collections, as you said. So I, I recall you started out what, like doing NFTs with the alpaca world thing that was like based on drawings from your daughter, right? So yes, you basically yes. created this whole business that's becoming very successful based off of art from your daughter. So what does your daughter think of all of this? Oh, she loves it. She she loves it. As a matter of fact, she's working now on a new collection. Uh, it's a hypopotamus collection. She's uh, creating the first draft and doing uh, some new crazy things there. But yeah, she she really loves the space. Yeah, well, so and awesome. there are so many collections here now. I like to just you know scroll through. I'm looking forward to the day that you've got you know the ability to uh to search here and i'm sure that that's coming there's alpacas you, you can already search uh joel if you oh, go to collections okay so this is something i don't know all right i'm at collections just, uh, oh just, it's uh, it's there <laughs> yes you have the search there it's uh it's there so you can easily go to uh, any collection that you want you guys are always a, a step ahead of me there with uh with these because i i think of something that um, I want and you're like oh we can do that and you do that to me all the time I'm like oh I want to be able to do some stuff with with bro punks that um, allows for people to to burn any from the collection right because the way it's been with blends is you have to select what's the final result and what do you need to put in to do it but I, maybe I want to randomize it where you can pick any of them and, and you've got that now too yes uh, we have that, and um, we are also improving on some of the filtering capabilities to select the ingredients. And um, and yeah, what what you see in the um, in the public user interface right now, it's only um, the tip of the iceberg. The contract already supports many more uh, features, but uh, we have to cost, uh, to configure it uh, using a JSON file at the moment. Very nice. Yeah, so I, I do want to talk about this. This is because Joel has this up on the screen right now. <clears throat> Super blends. A regular blend is like, hey, I'm taking this card and I'm taking this card. Like, what are all some of the things that you're going to be able to do in these super blends? Because I know people are really excited about this. Yes. So what you can do with super blends is that you have more filtering power to select the, the, the ingredients. For example, you can select not only templates, but you can filter based on, a, on attribute values. And that gives you a lot of power. And there are in the contract, there are uh, even more uh, things that we can do. There's, for example, the filter based on, the, on schema. Uh, that is something we, we can already do, but it's not possible with the user interface and we are working on that. So um, that's, let's say, the first thing that you have the power to, um, to, to, to have more flexibilities to select the ingredients. But also on the, um, on the result side, 
now you have more possibilities. You can have more than one uh, possible result. So you can add, for example, three possible results and define the odds for each of these um, of these NFTs. That's great. I'm, I'm going to be playing with that tool a whole bunch in the future. Uh, you know, uh, up until really recently, we've done all of our blockchain heroes on Atomic and uh, Jonah and Fabian are incredible. They've created a great platform. It's, it's very elegant. The UI is nice, uh, but it looks like they're, they're interested um, in, uh, in the, marketplace more than creating the platform for creators at least that's what my perception is which is why you guys have come in and done the uh, the creator bit and you're leveling it up here by offering a token here it says here the nefty token there's there's betsy your uh, your uh, presumably good witch You've got a white paper here. So let's talk about the token and what it will do. Yes. So the token basically uh, will allow you to do many things. Uh, the token is considered a hybrid token. It's um, used for uh, multiple pur pur purposes. And uh, one of those is it's a utility token that would, will allow collections to... Um, to gain access to the premium features of Nefty Blocks, for example, the the Super Blender, which is right now uh, available uh, for um, for free for a limited time, will be one of these uh, uh, premium features. For example, in a couple of days, we will um, release the um, the first version of the pre-minted packs. Um, Preminted packs uh, self-service uh, UI, and that's also part of what will be a premium service uh, from Nefty Block. So these kind of things uh, will be available to people who are staking the Nefty token on our platform. Um, the other thing is that it will also be used uh, used kind of like a governance token. It's not really a hundred percent governance token because it's only focusing on the functionality part of the platform. No, not on the business decisions, not on the company decisions, but only on the functionality uh, of the product. So people who are staking Nefty will be able to uh, submit uh, feature proposals and the rest of the collection will be able to vote and whatever gets uh, voted, we will uh, prioritize it and uh, develop to include it as part of the platform. And the third, um, the third utility for the token is the, the liquidity mining program, which is basically a program that, uh, that we created to incentivize the, the use of the platform. And um, what will happen with liquidity mining is that um, we will have a rewards uh, pool that will be uh, released every week, 150,000 NFTs. And initially, it will be distributed 50% to buyers and 50% to sellers. And it will be distributed accorded, according to uh, what they have uh, bought or sold on the platform. And for those uh, collections and buyers who are staking NFT, we will apply some multipliers to give them, them a bigger share of the, um, of the pie. And the, the formulas on how to, um, how to calculate that are uh, published in the, um, on the white paper. Very nice. Yeah, I'm going through the white paper right now as well. Joel's is showing, is showing it up here on the screen. A lot of stuff going on on this. And if you are an early adopter of Nifty, then you actually are going to, I guess, what you, you get a benefit from additional Nifty drops. Uh, if you participated in buying and selling uh, before June 29th, I guess. So it's like yep. the early people, and if you buy in this sale, you're going to become a pioneer, huh? Yes, they um, they uh, have that exactly. They have the, um, uh, that there will be three airdrops, one for the, um, for the people who uh, interacted with the platform and bought or sold at least one wax before uh, June 29th. They will uh, be able to claim some nifty. Also, um, the, um, the gold and silver coin holders from Alpaca Awards will get that. And we have some Betsy NFTs that are also uh, eligible to, um, to participate in an airdrop. So those what's, are what's that collection one? What's the collection that the Betsy NFTs are in? It's on cut, uh, uncut NFTs. Uncut there NFTs. There we go. Yes. There we, there we go right there. So this is... Uh, Betsy looks like uh, they're all sold out. 
uh, except for this freebie here, which I guess yeah, I... and and that freebie uses the proof of uh, ownership. Um, mm -hmm. So, but but it's funny because there are still some uh, betsies to claim, and people will receive some uh, nifty if they claim them. Them, but uh, apparently the the owners of the nifties haven't claimed some of the um, of the free uh, betsies that we have there. So, when does the token sale take place, and um, how does somebody participate? And 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 part of this is a lot of people will ask, well, is this a uh, is this a security? Because there's all kinds of laws around that. Yes. Okay. Let me get first there. Um, the the token will the token sale will take place as an NFT sale. What we will be selling is not really a token. We will be selling an NFT inside a pack. And when you open the pack, you will receive the, uh, a, a certain amount of tokens, a pretty fine amount of tokens per, um, uh, per pack. Uh, there are three different packs, the collector, the artist, and the whale. And they, each of them have a different uh, amount of tokens that, uh, that they deliver. And the tokens will be received when you open the pack. Uh, this sale, as I said, will happen on uh, August 31st. And there are also some uh, interesting aspects there. For example, inside the, um, the collector packs, there will be up to 128 um, artists, which will uh, give you way more uh, nifty than what you uh, were supposed to receive. The, um, the artist uh, can the artists can receive up to 64 um, whales and inside the whales there will be a golden betsy which uh, gives you 32000 nifty wow. and there is um That's interesting. there is a second betsy uh, golden betsy that will be included in the um, in the cross collection packs which uh, you guys are a part of that with uh, blockchain heroes and people will be able to uh, to blend some ingredients to get those packs one week after the after the community sale. So there's a gold, couple golden Betsy's. Is there any platinum Betsy's or diamond Betsy's or no? Betsy's? The top Betsy's are the golden Betsy's. That those are the golden ones that deliver Betsy's the most. Is the best Betsy. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So uh, August thirty first. How many tokens are you going to be selling within the packs? How many tokens are in each pack? Is it a predefined amount or is it like Oh, I bought a pack. Oh, I got 31 in this one. Oh, I got 147. No, no, no. How is it? There is a pretty fine amount. There's uh, 400 nifties uh, in each um, in each collector pack, 1300 in each um, artist, and 3200 in the whales. Mm, and how much are those going to be each? Uh, 50, 150, and th 300. So, Dollars. so what's the the price per token come out to? Um, if you buy the whale, it's uh, around eight uh, USD cents. Uh, the if you buy the um, the collector, it's uh, around ten. And if you buy the um, the smaller one, which is the um, sorry, the collector is the smaller one that is around twelve. And the um, and the 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 artist is around the ten. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand how this works technologically. They buy the pack, it's an NFT. How does that become a tradable token? Well, the, the, what we have is a token with a, with a contract like any other uh, EOS IO token. Mm -hmm. And we will, uh, we will transfer the tokens directly to the, to the user wallet when they open the pack. Got the it. The moment you open your pack, you will receive the, the tokens like uh, like airdrop. So is it a non-transferable then? You, when no, you no, no, no. You can transfer it and 10% um, of the proceedings of the of the community sale will be uh, deposited in, a, in an anchor pool so that uh, people can go and, uh, and buy more uh, nifty or sell nifty in the future. Okay, but I'm, I'm confused about this. So I buy the pack that I open up, there's a thousand nefty in it, and immediately those are dropped. Now, how can I sell that somewhere else? Because I've already received the drop. I've already received the nefty token for having that NFT. Uh, yes. 
And what you can do is uh, start using your, uh, your NFT to access uh, the premium features of the platform or for any uh, other thing that you want to do with it. Right, but that, that's not my question. The, the NFT that contains the NFT, you're saying I can sell that. Ah, no, 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 no. That, oh. Well, yeah, you can sell the NFT, but the NFT is useless after, uh, after opening the pack. Well, not completely useless because you will be able to blend the, um, this NFT with a Pioneer Pass and uh, 2,500 lucky uh, collectors will be able to get the cross collections packs by blending, uh, blending one of the Betsy's with, with one Pioneer Pass. So will people know that when they buy a, um, an NFT off the secondary market that it's already been, that there's no NFT attached to it? I guess that's what I'm getting. Yes, that will be clearly explained in the, um, in the drop. Uh, but it's, it's important what you say, because yeah, people have to be very aware that the only way to claim the NFT is if you have a pack that has not been opened. If the pack was already open, you will not be able to claim nefty anymore okay now trav i think this is a good time to debut um something here because juan mentioned the um the community packs and uh we were inspired by this is this is their betsy here betsy sold out herself she's got no more and uh, zach our creative director took her brought her into the blockchain heroes universe and uh, so we're we're pleased to debut our betsy the benevolent here for the first time and of course this card uh, once complete will have the blockchain heroes nameplate and her name and uh, the lore on the back um, but the only place you'll be able to get this blockchain heroes card is in the nefty blocks community pack betsy's kind of hot yeah she's got like a real life betsy because i need to, i want to meet her <laughs> I mean, look at her. Look at those stockings she's got on. Those are, those oh, yeah. are fancy. She's, she's a good some, witch. You got some style good, over there. Well, if you ask Sana, Sana is the artist who created the original Betsy's. She would be very mad if you say she's a witch, but because she says she's a wizard, not a witch. But uh, ah, she's a wizard. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what that, that's what Sana says. But uh, for me, it's the same. I think that both witches and wizards are amazing. So. Uh, I don't have a problem. Well, with it's that. our card. We'll reimagine her however we want. So, <laughs> yes, <There you laughs> exactly. Go. Nice. How many? How many? How many packs are going to be available? So you say you have the whale packs or whatever you're calling them, um, and there are X amount of these. I mean, I'm sure so there's gonna be people coming in and wanting to buy a whole bunch of these. And is is it purchasable only with wax, or can you do it with some fiat? How how's that? Uh, you, you can buy them only with wax, and um, there will be a, a limit per person. We are, are still defining it with a cooldown so that you can buy again. Uh, uh, but what we want is to give uh, everybody a fair, fair chance to to get them. There will be eight thousand one hundred and ninety two uh, collector packs, four thousand and 96 artists and uh, 2,048 whales. Mm, this might be the first time, Joel, we've ever seen anybody do this, where they're actually doing a token generation event through the power of NFTs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's very creative and, uh, and clever. Um, and of course, not financial advice, but those of you in the NFT space, uh, be paying attention to what NFT is doing here. Are you guys looking to go beyond wax in the future? Yes, that's one idea, one idea that we have. We really want to go beyond wax and uh, be able to, uh, to interact with uh, Ethereum, with uh, Polygon, and uh, eventually uh, other uh, blockchains. Um, uh, wax is where we were born and uh, we really love the wax uh, ecosystem but uh, but we think that the future includes um, inter blockchain uh, nfts so uh, we want to be there also where were you born i was born on the wax blockchain okay. i was yeah. i was just a wee lad when i was 
<laughs> uh, excellent. Well, we encourage you guys to go check it out, do your own research and due diligence. And uh, Juan, thanks for coming on. Good luck with the, the sale, the token sale, the pack sale. And um, you can bet for sure that we will be involved because we already are with our with our card. But um, we're definitely going to have some nefties because we're going to be using the platform as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Juan, Thank Juan, you. thanks for coming on. Hope you sell thanks, out all your nefties until they're all gone. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for having me here, guys. So there you go. Nefty Blocks is doing their token sale. And yes, I'm going to be acquiring some of these packs and getting some Betsy's and Blockchain Heroes has contributed the Betsy card and multiple variations to the packs. Very excited to uh, be a part of helping to build the future of the wax ecosystem. What great timing, especially now that wax is getting so much more attention and several properties are listing high in the market caps um, because they're doing really well on wax. Love it. Yep, their token sale, they're doing something very unique as they mentioned, having the NFTs as part of the token. So go buy the packs and whatnot. Very cool, I've not seen anybody else doing that as well, selling tokens of your company in NFTs. The world is strange, my friends, and getting stranger. And, so and I'll tell you, I have one more thing to say about it, and it's this. Get your NFT, get your NFTs. Oh no, they're they're dying in the street. Oh, they're safe now. Here, have an NFT. Even nifty. I'm just going to say that has got to be some of the worst music I've ever heard. And I love it and keep it nifty. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>